Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Completionist. I haven't done one of these episodes in a very long time. And you know, I kind of got to live up to my name as the video game completionist and show you guys how to complete some of my favorite uh, video games. For this episode, uh, guys, the game that I'm going to show you how to complete is a wonderful little JRPG for the Sega Saturn known as Albert Odyssey Legend of Eldian. Now, Albert Odyssey is a Japanese role playing game that was developed by Sunsoft and released and published by Working Designs in 1997. When it comes to completing this game, guys, uh, you'll be happy to know that you only need to play this game once. Um, this JRPG isn't a JRPG that tries to reinvent itself. It's a very basic uh, JRPG with regards to its uh, simplicity, but that's one of the most appealing things when it comes uh, to this game, is that it doesn't have to be different. And this is a game that can literally make you fall in love with the beautiful music and the beautiful graphics that, that this game has to offer during a time in which you know, JRPGs were a very simple and pleasant experience. Now, as I said before, guys, you only need to play this game once in order to complete it. Uh, since it is a very uh, early JRPG, uh, one, of the, oh, one of the things that actually works in your favor is that there are no weapon lists to fill out, there are no item lists, and there are no bestiaries. But when it comes to completing this game, you know, uh, the biggest things that you need to go about when it comes to completing this game is that you literally need to grab every item in every town and open every treasure chest in, in every dungeon. But the biggest thing when it comes to completing this game is that there are a lot of missables and uh, permanent missables per se. And what I mean by that is that there are some items and even specific story sequences that can be missed in this game entirely. So what I'm going to show you through, uh, uh, throughout this how to complete video is how to obtain these story sequences and also to get some of the best items in the game because there is very little information on this game. Uh, on Game Facts, there's only a couple of FAQs um, for this game but none of them are in very great detail. I had to visit a lot of different uh, gaming forums and uh, different gaming websites, you know, to find all the information that I needed to find when it comes to, to completing this game. So anyway guys, with the game in hand, let me show you how to fully complete Albert Odyssey Legend of Eldian for the Sega Saturn. This game follows the excursions of a young adventurer by the name of Pike. In the very beginning of the game, Pike's parents are murdered by a horde of monsters. And through the mystical sword's power, Pike managed to survive this onslaught. Alone and frightened, Pike is rescued by a harpy by the name of Laia and brought back to her home in the harpy forest. Over the next 10 years, Laia raises Pike in the Harpy Forest and acts as an adoptive sister to this young adventurer. The story progresses when an evil mage by the name of Belnard comes to the Harpy Forest in order to collect a power stone for his own evil ambitions. Unfortunately, as both Laia and Pike confront the villain, the evil mage places a curse on both of them which turned them both into stone. Pike's mystical sword by the name of Cirrus uses her power to lift the curse off of Pike, but unfortunately, Laia has remained a stone statue. Pike, who is mourning the loss of his sister, decides to take it upon himself to look for a cure for his adoptive sister to bring her back to normal. Thus, this event starts our story in Albert Odyssey. As I've mentioned before, Albert Odyssey Legend of Eldian is a very simplistic JRPG. 
You travel from town to town with the occasional dungeon thrown in every so often to progress the story, and you meet a variety of different characters to help aid you on your quest. The game itself is divided into two storyline sections. Trust me, you'll know when the first storyline ends and the second one begins. It is my job to show you the things you need to watch out for when it comes to completing this game to 100%. When it comes to saving in this game, you can save in two ways. You can save anywhere in the world map. Also, in each town and in some dungeons, there will be an altar with a blue orb that you can save your progress at as well. The reason why I bring this up with regards to saving is that during my time completing this game, I discovered a glitch that can cause you to reset your game. When fighting random battles in a dungeon such as Valerian Castle and Valon's Fort, there might be a small chance that when a random battle loads, the game will not bring up the battle menu. The game will literally freeze. You'll simply see your characters and the monsters, but you'll have no way to fight or even progress the screen. I've had this happen to me on several occasions, losing several hours of gameplay in the process. So I wanted to provide ample warning to those that actually play the game to save as often as possible. This glitch does not make the game unplayable, but hell can it be annoying. One important thing that I wanted to bring to your attention is that when you go into an enemy dungeon such as Valerian Castle or Balan's Fort, make sure above anything else that you grab every item in every pot and every treasure in each treasure chest the first time around. If you defeat the boss of a specific dungeon such as the ones I've mentioned, you won't be able to go back to them no matter how hard you try. Now with that out of the way, let's focus on the first section of the game. With every new town you visit, always search all the empty pots that each town has to offer. These pots offer a variety of items that will help aid Pike's quest. I would recommend getting these items as soon as possible because there are specific story sequences that will alter the look of specific towns, and you may not be able to get these items at a later point in the story. Also be sure to check the weapon and armor shops to update your gear as necessary for every new town that you visit. The same goes for item shops as well. In the first section of the game, there is one story sequence that can be missed if you're not careful. After you beat Belnard on the desert mountain, you'll be asked to go to Bugdoniel in the center of the desert. Don't go to the town just yet. If you travel to the northwest of the town, you'll see the grounded air castle surrounded by a force field. If you go to the force field on the world map, you'll unlock a rather comical story section of the game. I won't spoil the comedy for you, but I'll sum it up like this. You can always count on working designs to do a really good job with their translations and add a good bit of humor to it. Once you've completed the first story section of the game, Laia has finally been cured of her stone curse, but alas, all is not right in the world. Pike's idol guy and his entourage have gone missing, and it's up to you and your party to endure on your second adventure throughout this wonderful game. The second section of the game has more missables than the first section of the game, so you have to go about it very carefully, just to make sure we don't miss anything. Let's focus on one of the most important items you can obtain in the game, which is the quest pass. In the town of Mysen, once you travel to the Duke's house, you'll see a scene where a girl runs off. The girl is actually the Duke's daughter, and her story is the focal point of getting one of the most important items throughout the entire game. Once she runs off, if you talk to the Duke afterwards, he'll mention a piece of dialogue where he dreams of flying someday, and how he has the resources to finally make this dream come true. 
This isn't the piece of dialogue you need to activate this side quest. Just outside the Duke's Manor, there is a female NPC. The girl that I am pointing at right now, after the Duke's daughter runs out of the manor, talk to this girl first before you talk to the Duke. Once you have done that, go back into the Duke's Manor and he'll ask you to go find his daughter. This is the exact piece of dialogue that we need in order to activate this side quest. Once you have finished talking to the Duke, travel north of my scent, but don't go into the Graveyard of Ages. If you do go into the graveyard, even if it's only once, you won't be able to activate the scene. Once you see the Graveyard of Ages dungeon on the world map, travel north and then immediately east. Keep walking east. On your television screen, the water should be above you, and you should be able to walk into a destroyed town, which isn't visible on the world map. If the water is on the bottom of the television screen, then you've traveled too far north. In this destroyed town, you'll meet the Duke's daughter and an enemy known as the Iron Giant. Destroy the Iron Giant, and the Duke will give you an item called the Quest Pass, which decreases the cost of all items, weapon, and armor by half. This is an excellent item and can make your time in the game that much easier. The next missable story sequence is one that doesn't net you any items, but it is quite a comical scene all the same. This story sequence is known as the Two Lovers side quest. In the town of Gagarl, you'll meet a man that is distraught because the love of his life left him and hasn't come back. This quest should be completed once you have Krishna in your party because of her teleportation spell. It technically could be done earlier, but I choose to wait until the second half of the game because it's convenient. If you play your Saturn game between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., or change your Saturn internal clock to that time, you'll actually find his wife in a cave southeast of the town of Gadel. Keep going back and forth between these two locations and eventually the old man will follow you to the cave so that he can be reunited with his long lost love. You have to hand it to JRPGs, they always love to make time to make you go through a tedious fetch quest. The story sequence doesn't really give you anything in particular, but the scene itself is quite endearing and a little comical to boot. The final missable story sequence in the game is a scene that shows more depth into Pike and Eka's relationship. This scene can be activated once you have beaten all of the four towers in order to unlock the central tower, which is the final dungeon in the game. Don't go to the final dungeon just yet, because if you do, you won't be able to return. Head back to the town of Solace and go back to the sanctuary. There you'll unlock an extra scene about Pike revealing his true feelings for Eka. It's a nice little side story to see, especially before you go to the final dungeon. You'll also get five Miracle Mangoes, which are very useful items in the game. As I'm beating the final boss of the game, there are just a few more things that I wanted to go over. Before you go to the final dungeon, and remember, all the other towers in the game need to be beaten first, head to the towns of Chestoria, Mycent, and Gadel. 
If you go to the weapon and armor shops, you'll notice that you can purchase really powerful weapons and armor in each of the shops in those locations that are more powerful than other weapons and armor you have found throughout the game. In this game as well, if you want to make sure you've unlocked each character's specific set of skills, a safe level to obtain them would definitely be level 50. This is a game where you don't need to do a lot of needless grinding, so it's very easy to obtain this level. It also helps that each boss of the four towers in the final section of the game give away a ton of experience once they're defeated. With the final boss now defeated, we have officially completed Albert Odyssey Legend of Eldian. So there we have it guys, we have now successfully completed Albert Odyssey Legend of Eldian for the Sega Saturn. It's as I said before, it is a very simplistic uh, JRPG, but it isn't very difficult uh, uh, with regards to, to other JRPGs out there. You know, it's literally a JRPG that you really don't need to spend a lot of hours, you know, needlessly grinding. You know, it has a very excellent st uh, steady pace to it. But as I keep saying before, guys, the biggest thing when it comes to completing this video game is that you need to make sure that you grab every treasure chest in, in every dungeon that you go to because the majority of the dungeons in this game you don't have an opportunity to go back to. So you literally only have one chance to get them. And also, some of the hidden story sequences in this game have such a very short window, you need to go after them as soon as possible. Now, with regards to Albert Odyssey Legend of Eldian, it is a JRPG that is highly sought after, you know, by, uh, by a lot of video game uh, collectors. You know, it is one of the... Uh, it's not necessarily like one of the hardest games to find uh, for, uh, for the Sega Saturn, but, uh, but a lot of people uh, do want to own it. So, it can get a little pricey, but uh, take it from me, you know, even though it is a very simplistic JRPG, I feel it's, it's well worth the, uh, 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 the price if you do manage to find it. Now guys, if you do like Albert Odyssey for the uh, Sega Saturn, you know, uh, other Sega Saturn uh, JRPGs by uh, Working Designs, I can definitely recommend, is uh, Magic Knight Ray Earth. For the, uh, for the Sega Saturn. Now, as far as I know, I think, according to what I've heard from people, is that this was the last uh, uh, North American uh, game for the uh, Sega Saturn. And, uh, and, and I've actually heard a lot of great things about it, so you know, I can't wait to, to finally give this game a try. And the other uh, Working Designs title, you know, I can highly recommend. Uh, it, it, uh, a lot of my gaming friends actually quite love it, you know, on, on the gaming forum that, that I'm a part of and that game is Dragon Force. So if you do like uh, Albert Odyssey Legend of Eldian, I highly recommend uh, you check these other titles out as well. So anyway guys, that takes care of another episode of The Completionist. So anyway guys, I, um, um, I hope you enjoyed this how to complete video. I hope to, to do a few more of these videos you know, before I have to head back out west. But anyway, as always, guys, take care, and I wish you nothing but the best. Later.